All right, this is gonna be a lesson on the song Head Cheese, the final song on the five song Noteworthy EP. I'm gonna jump straight in. It's standard tuning, E, A, D, G, B, E. And I'm gonna be using a guitar with humbuckers once again, my Squire 2017 Mustang. You want a guitar with a lot of dirt, a lot of bass frequency. Um, sort of set your tone settings on your amp so the bass is real high, uh, scoop the mids and then drop the treble because this song's got to be punchy. Right, so the song starts with your uh, standard octave shape, uh, the power chord shape with the octave extension is what I mean, on the 7th fret of the A string. But what you want to do is let that low E string ring as every time you hit that chord. So the chord itself is just a standard fifth chord shape stemming from the seventh fret on the E on the A string, second string of the set. And then you want to go ninth fret on the D string. And then finally you want to do the octave with your pinky finger so that you get that kind of sound. Um, additionally, finally, you add that low E string to the ring. And that's the kind of sound you want. It's a real bassy sound again, this song really want to drive that home because it's meant to be climactic, it ends the EP and it's meant to be the big finish. So the rhythm, strumming pattern, you want to do this kind of thing. So every time you're doing that final down stroke before the uh, riff repeats, you're really emphasizing that strike. Um, it does that, I think, three times, and then it goes to this chord. So if you miss that, it's the, uh, what is that, the eighth fret of the low E string, tenth fret on the A string, and then you're doing the octave extension again, the tenth fret on the D string. And then it's the same rhythm, but um, this is just uh, done on the fourth progression through the riff. So, and then it loops again, and it happens every time you get to that fourth part. That's the main riff. Um, there are a few sort of, you know, uh, highlighted parts. That thing that I did just there, the sort of stop-start thing. All you do is cut the riff short that time. And then, um, yeah, you, if you listen to the song, you'll see where that comes up just before we go into the chorus. Um, that's the introduction. The chorus goes like so. is uh, octave extension power chord stemming from the seventh fret on the E string going through to your ninth fret on the A, ninth fret on the D then you want to do the power chord shape stemming from the A on the low E string fifth fret on the E, seventh fret on the A, seventh fret on the D and then bring that up to 8th fret on the E, 10th fret on the A, 10th fret on the D. Then on that last, on those last two times through the progression, you're extending that power chord of the octave extension out to the major chord shape from the 7th uh, fret on the E. 
So what you want to be playing there is your standard octave chord with the that's the uh, what's that the eighth fret on the G, and then the uh, seventh fret on the B and the E strings, and then carry that shape down to the A major, it will be an A major bar chord now, and then straight up to the, I think that's a C, yeah, straight up to the C. So it goes B, A major, uh, B major, A major, C major. And then it goes straight back into that main riff again. Does that twice so intro chorus intro chorus then we get to this kind of um, let's see here this kind of thing all that is is uh, the wah pedal that I'm using you just kick it in go mad with it and it just builds up to the bridge section of the song Bridge section of the song being this. Again, that part is just the main riff again. You know, you're just doing that, but with the wah pedal incorporated into the mix. Uh, the bridge section stemming from the high, oh well, the E that stems from the high end of the fretboard, the seventh fret on the A string. But this time you're not playing that open E yet, you're leaving that muted. So the sound you want to get. You're going to be palm muted, using that part of your hand again. So you're going for your E power chord without the octave extension. You're just going to be hearing these two notes. So 7th fret on the A, ninth fret on the uh, D. And then all you're doing there is extending that shape from the 9th fret on the D to the 10th fret on the D. So then you just bring it back to that 9th uh, fret again. Then you want to use your middle finger to hit the 9th fret on the E string. While still playing the seventh fret on the A and the ninth fret on the D, so all in all, it should be seventh fret on the E, uh, eighth fret on the E, seventh fret on the A, ninth fret on the D, which should give you this sound. It's real clashy, and then you just palm mute and strike again, and then you go to this shape, which is using your index finger to bar the 7th fret on the E, the 7th fret on the A, and then using your pinky finger, so that's all you're doing, pinky finger to play the 10th on the D. But then it's the same concept again. This time you're taking that 10th fret on the D, back down to resolve to the 9th on the D. Then it loops. Then we get to the second time through the progression, incorporating that low E. That will help to bring the low end back into the mix. It introduces a new concept and re-familiarises the audience's eardrums because it's the same kind of concept over again from the introduction. All you're doing there is introducing the low E into the mix. See what it does, it kind of builds momentum, emphasizes the songs coming to a 
halt. It's going to all crash at once, and you should get the picture. Um, and then you just ride that melody, whatever you want to call it, chord progression, right through to the outro of the song, uh, getting looser with the rhythm, because it's meant to sound more hectic, more erratic. <laughs> That was Head Cheese, the final song on the Noteworthy EP. There's five songs on that. You can purchase it from our Bandcamp page. Um, yeah, that's all I've got for this week. Hope you've enjoyed.